What do you expect from Tana Talk 4? You know, I might be excited about this as the actual album of the year, potentially. Mm. How about that? Because all that I've been seeing is him working, but we haven't been hearing anything. And for me, that's the stuff that excites me. We've been hearing slight things that Alchemist is there, Behringer is there, uh, Premier is there. We've been hearing things like that. Mm. He just that, heard the interview where he's talking about redoing Ten Crack Commandments. I mean, you know, I, I, <clears throat> you and I have talked behind the scenes about how I feel about that song, and it's like, oh, it's like if you go, it's like if you've been talking about ninety seven Hove, and now you're going back Ten Crack Commandments, and you're talking about getting a verse from Jay Z, and like doing these things. That special album stuff. That's somebody that's trying to put together something special, and uh, wants you to know that he's putting together something special but isn't letting you really hear anything. And that's the most important part. I agree. And that's the part that makes me think that it's like, oh, this shit might be special. Let me get to the super chat real quick. Uh, Danal, I'm sorry if I butchered your name. Let's see. He says, I hate to be the dead horse, but what's the difference between flow and delivery? Because I would give Nas flow a 10 and his delivery an 8. Good question. What would you uh, respond to that, Coop? I mean, <clears throat> so we, hold on. What did he say he would give Nas his delivery? Um, he said a flow of 10, a delivery of 8. I, would, I mean, if he was breaking it down, okay, so Nas' flow isn't always a 10 because I guess that would be the thing that's kind of hurt him during that transitional period, like when Ye is talking about, how when Jay can rhyme over, is that your bitch? And Nas can't rhyme like that. That's the flow. Okay. Right, Nas's delivery is the delivery cool. is you being great at the way that you already do. Right, it. he's Nas, and your so Nas flow is, is your, Nas's delivery yeah. is Nas's delivery. It's good enough. It gotcha. fits the bill. That's the guy from New York State of Mind. You and get the what I'm flow saying? Is just the ability to change it up yeah. for yeah, other the patternization, people. The patternization of how you put it together. Yes, for other. <laughs> purposes like you said there's why you that home alone chamber. why she mad at me room one, on. why you home alone why she mad at me room 112 hotel balcony why she say hey you can talk house for me that's no respect that's no respect at all you better check it dog what do you think what do you wrong. think jay if, you had, floors, if right somebody asked you what is jay-z's flow what song would you pull out and say this is jay-z's oh, flow jay, okay so jay-z's flow to me is the guy that you're hearing like on the evils? Can I live? Friend or foe? A million and one question. Imaginary player. That's his flow. It is but his flow because a, I can't really, I can't really put say, that flow on anybody else. Like right, the way he rapped on a million and one, that doesn't sound like him. Yeah. Hold on, for, and for all the people that say, "Hey, don't but Mike, he has such an array of flows." Oh, Mike. He does. Yes, I think that that uh, hard knock life flow is his flow too. Because if I, mean. I heard somebody rapping like that, like you remember that um, he just got signed to Def Jam, and I don't want to disrespect the the young rappers uh, because I don't know his name off top. It'll come to me in a minute, but he kind of sounds like Jay, right? He has Jay's tone. But his delivery is similar to what we've heard from previous J records. And that is what the delivery is. Or like when, um, like when, um, 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 what's his name? Gorilla Black went out there and sounded like big. He was like, put the potato on the burrow. Like that's, that's You want to know what it is too? Is is that like. A delivery rather, excuse me. Yeah, yeah. And, and and Jay is the author of a lot of original flows, much like Big, where it's like, well, that's authentic unto him. Because like even like when <clears throat> like when I hear who you with, that's why I love who you with, because it's like, well, that's Jay. Like, Jordan you know, House said it's all right is Jay's flow. It is. Yes. On the jewels, yes. I blew more money than Latrell. They don't know you too well. You jail like Flubber. I hover I'm above the city in the private jet. Live is set. Pressure breaks. Fans want to investigate. Mr. I don't have nothing. Less than eight. eight. And anything involved with my name, regardless of the fame, it's hard. I can't even walk through all of the game. Charge it to the charge game. It to the... American Express. Man, Yo. all I did was inherit is stress. Wow. Every jam tough one. You and your man bump you. Should just let you live. 
right? Negative. Negative. <laughs> I swear. <laughs> Yo, all right, all right. With all that being said, and, and I'm glad we went on that, my prediction for Benny's album is we're going to get a Jay-Z feature. I yeah. think that Tana Talks 4, I'm, I'm, I think it would be great if we got a 97 Ho Part 2, a remix or something with, like that. With, 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 with Jay. Jay. 97 Ho Part 2 with, with Ho. With Jay. Yeah. Yes. And I think Jay needs this. I think it's the 25th anniversary of uh, Volume 1 anyway. I think Jay is actually building up something for a re-release of the 25th anniversary of show or something because he's talking about Volume 1. And I think that this would be a perfect opportunity for Jay to insert himself into what's going on, hip-hop-wise. I, I would hate to see Jay-Z miss the opportunity to get on Tana Talks 4 on the 25th anniversary of Volume 1 and not be on a Part 2 of 97 Hope. They both need this. Mm -hmm. Hip-hop like needs this. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Is that your favorite song on Tana Talk 3? That and a tie for Rick. Rick okay. and 97 Hope are my favorite songs. It's a tie. I mean, that would be so epic, man, to get, keep the it same was, beat. And you yeah. know what I'm saying? Benny come with some updated rhymes. And, and yo, well, Jay got, just comes got, in there. He's got, he's got Primo there. He's already redoing 10 Crack Commandments, so it would be awesome. Like, you know what I'm saying? There's, like, I told you, I'm cool if this album is literally, like, six tracks Alchemist, five tracks Derringer, two tracks Primo. Totally okay with that. You can stop right there. Because the he's, says, do y'all... Because he sounds great on those guys' beats. Nas the Great says, do y'all think there's going to be a Nas feature on Tana Talk 4? No. Hey, go ahead and go for it. I was actually wondering why Pusha T and Nas haven't worked together yet, especially with both of them having a the relationship with Ye, and during that time, even when they was all recording around the same time. Hmm. I was thinking about that's that today. A, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. I, I, well, mean, I, I can see that, that would be something that would be nice to see at this point, too, don't you think? I think so, too. Um, but we already know that Jay is going to be on uh, Pusha's album, and it's rare that somebody's able to get both of them for their album. So Kanye, but Kanye does. But Kanye's the bridge. He's something else. Kanye, but Kanye's involved in this Pusha project, is he not? That's true. He is. Um, there you have. It. Yeah. 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 There you have. It. <laughs> Kanye is a hip hop legend. I mean, remember, don't, <laughs> don't be surprised if I said it first, though. Don't be surprised if like the Pusha T album comes out and it's got a Nas feature. Just, well, you know what? Again. Happening. I don't expect that, but I think that is a very bold prediction. Like I said, my prediction is Jay is going to be on um, Tana Talk 4. Yeah, yeah. I think and I think that that... I think Benny already expressed that he wants a Rockefeller chain. Um, and this is before Dame Dash said, if he doesn't give you a Rockefeller chain, it's not official. But whatever. Um, so he wants a Rockefeller chain. And... Um, yeah, I think this is an opportunity for it. Isn't he already managed by Rock Nation? Yes, or, or okay. unless something changed with something the whole like Def that. Jam yeah. signing. Unless something changed with the Def Jam signing in terms of like uh, management affiliation changing hands in some sort of. So, I, I don't know how these deals. So there's work vested here. interest in there, right, for Jay, and and it would be a huge moment for Benny's career and for you know their client if they can insert Jay Z into this '97 Hove on Tana Talk Four. I mean, if this doesn't happen, I think this is a huge opportunity missed all around. Mm -hmm. You know, um, oh, I agree. Let me ask you something real quick, though, because we were talking about this in the barbershop, and the um, owner of the barbershop, E Man, he is a huge Jay Z fan, and he was just arguing me down that Jay is still better than Nas. And I'm like, well, you know, honestly, the last three efforts have forged. Nas ahead of Jay and I asked him I was like do you think Jay is going to make another album he said no and I was like well if that's the case then Nas is just ahead of Jay yeah well let me ask you this though do you think Jay is going to make another album yes he's too competitive I think so too he's, he, he of all the all time great MCs is probably the most competitive He's the most well, competitive MC ever. How about yes, that? Possibly. And it's not even but, close. Big was but, very but competitive too. too but, but, yeah. but, but but also too, let's understand something. This was a guy that didn't 
released his first solo album until he was almost 27 years old. Go look at, and that's why I bring up the all-time great MCs. Go look at all the other all-time great MCs. DMX is the only other person that you'll find coming out with the album that late. And niggas knew who X was before they knew who Jay was, even though Jay got here first. No, no, no. X was, his name was ringing for a lot of things, but mostly the rap. Where Jay was, you know, heavy in the street for, you know, multiple things. Yeah. Um, I think that there was never, and I say this respectfully, and it's just history. Anybody could look at look this up. I don't say this slighting Jay in any sense, but I think that DMX never had an identity problem. He, you know what I'm saying? Like DMX is DMX okay. in '92, and when you listen to some of his old records. It's amazing how dope these records are. He never had to really find his style. Like, his style was what it was. There's some really, really early stuff where he's, you know, he's like a kid and he's rapping a certain way. But by the time he found his flow and his way of making music, there was no, like, original. Even in the early stuff, you can hear it, though, Mike. Yeah. There was no, like, original flavor stage Mm -hmm. for him, like. DMX hit the ground running. His problem was he just couldn't stay out of trouble. Mm-hmm. That was the that was the only reason why labels weren't signing that was him. Like even that. when he found himself and found his voice, what do you mean? Yeah, that's the whole. It's the only problem. What do you mean? It's the only problem. Problem is that he couldn't stay out of trouble. Yeah, I mean, and that was the only reason why labels weren't taking a chance on him early. Because I'm listening to some of that early stuff. I'm like, man, this stuff is phenomenal. Got to make a move. The original one is fine. He's nice. He's nice. Yeah. He's yeah. nice. He's nice. he been nice. Yeah, he's why, been nice. That's why when he's like, yo, I beat Jay in that battle, it's like, I wouldn't believe that if almost anybody else said that but you in that year, given those circumstances. And like, yeah, like, no, I believe that. If he says that, I believe that. But I wouldn't believe that about anybody else around Jay around that time out there in the streets except X. Well, that's the thing with X. Like that. That's the thing with X and Nas. Like, as soon as they hit the mic, they were great. Period. Yeah, Jay just got better and better and better. And he by the time on- we heard him on Reasonable Doubt, that was like five years of work of his, getting his, his style no, together. His, his best bar to me, like like that, really speaks to who he is, is actually on Hard Knock Life when he says, "As far as progress, you'll be hard pressed." To find another rapper hot as me. It's the realest shit he's ever said. Nobody's ever progressed the way that he's progressed. I gave you prophecy of my first joint. Yeah, nobody's progressed like that. Because he and that's the thing too. Even I understand when in my lifetime comes out, he's not even like a top fifty rapper. Like two years later, it's like that guy's top five, top ten in nineteen ninety six. No, that's real. And it's like even as dope as reasonable doubt is, it was overlooked. Seven vastly you know from a national level when it came out and that's what i mean that's why he said on hard knock life you know i gave you prophecy on my first joint you're all lamed out didn't really appreciate it till the second one came out you know i don't like that he said that because what he had to understand is around the time what reasonable doubt did numbers wise was what the purple tape actually did the summer before which is what talk like that would get you around that time which is about 700 800 000 units you know well, what I'm saying? He had one. I think he had that. one legit hit on there, though. To be perfectly honest, I mean, I That's remember what I'm just like just like the Purple Tape got one legit hit on there. Yeah, I remember. I like they don't have legit hits. I remember um, feeling it was getting played like in the late night in radio down here at least. But yeah. I remember can't knock the hustle, you know, being on MTV. And I know that's probably mostly because yeah. of Mary. No, Can't Knock the Hustle was getting played in Charlotte. Yeah. In it was getting I remember was getting Can't Knock the Hustle getting played. I don't know if I could say it was a hit per se, but it was one of those songs that was getting played. It was getting, he was getting love, but it wasn't like, it wasn't crazy. Yeah, wasn't, Ain't No Nigga was the hit. Ain't No Nigga was the hit. But, I mean, just for me, it's like, that's what I'm saying, but street albums like that weren't going like like multi, multi, platinum like that. Like Ready to Die went 1.5, and they had to make Juicy and Big Papa and a One More Chance remix. Yeah, no. Bill Maddie didn't go gold the first year. Cool G Rap never went gold. What would you say is Ill Maddie's biggest hit? The World Is Yours. Really? Is it? Wouldn't you say so? I thought it was It Ain't Hard to Tell, but I mean... 
I think for nostalgia purposes, when people hear it, it ain't hard to tell. It's a lot of people's first time hearing Nas, so it's like, oh, oh my God. But The World Is Yours was a bigger record, if memory serves. Um, and rightfully so, because I think it's a better song. Zombie Even TV said, like, whoa, whoa, the purple tape was laced. Yeah, it was, Not but... It is. Glaciers of Ice isn't like no... Glaciers of Ice wasn't getting played on a radio, fam. I love Glaciers of Ice. One of the best beats ever. Uh, purple tape is your top, is your top three. Radio. Purple Terminology wasn't getting played on the radio. Incarcerated Scarfaces was not getting played on the radio. <laughs> it wasn't. Ice Cream was the only song Ice on that album. Ice Cream was the only record that you heard. And that yeah. was mostly Meth because Meth had I'll Be There For You and How High out around the same time. So he was just high. If Meth's not even on that hook, like if it's the same hook and there's another rapper from Wu-Tang Clan singing that hook, it's not even the same. Mm. Uh, shout out to Kendall Outlaw with the Super Chat. He said, Jay tried to chase the 80s samples and style on volume one. The Bad Boy was doing it in 97. Yeah, I mean, he recorded that in Bad Boy. And I think that was executive produced by Puff, right? What? Which one? Uh, volume 1 was executive produced by Puff. It's very problematic. Still sounds great outside of those four records I keep bringing up. Yeah, just those I, four records. So, yeah, I think that um, one thing that Jay really did sound great under when he was chasing those 80 samples, I love him with the Angela Wimbush samples. That's really love dope. the dough is... Whew. Yeah. That's, Imaginary that's, players, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's what I'm talking about. I'll be about, on Foxy. Got, this one I'm talking about when he's got flows. I love the dope. Miraculous. Pockets stay full. Niggas spit the bull because we mad at Thor. Snatch the P89 that we clap in the drawers. And like, that's, it's like, who else talk like that? No, who you're right. Like Very that's, distinctive. And you know yeah, what? I Jay's think the author of a lot of flows. That's what I mean. It's like, yeah, his. He, he's got flow. So when you talk about Nas flow as a 10, it's like, no, 